Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today Luna and I are here to talk to you about our March TBR. There is so much going on in March. I originally had picked out just one single theme for my TBR and then realized that there are like multiple readathons that I want to participate in. So I made a general TBR theme of female authors for Women's History Month and then I'm also participating in three of these readathons that seemed interesting to me, but I kept that theme of female authors. So it kind of satisfies what I wanted to do with the month and also the requirements for the different readathons. So the first readathon that I'm going to be participating in this month is Middle Grade March. This is hosted by the Curly Reader and Books and Jams, and it's one that I have participated in a little bit in previous years. However, this year I decided I was really going to dive into this one a little bit. I am the baby of my family, so I'm not really exposed to middle grade books very frequently um, or kids books at all really of any age range. I think I compiled a list of three books for middle grade March that sound pretty exciting. One is pretty popular right now and I was actually aware of it, I'd heard of it a couple times before, but the other two are books that are a little bit older but still sound really amazing to me. So for middle grade March I have The Last Quintista by Donna Barbara Higuera. This is a book about basically the end of the days on Earth, um, society is crumbling, Earth has been destroyed, and a small group of humans leaves on a spaceship. It's scientists and their children, and our main character is going to wake up like hundreds of years in the future and realize that all of the people that have survived have no memory of Earth. There is a nefarious group of people or aliens that have taken over the spaceship and basically wiped the memories of everyone. So she's the only person that remembers Earth and humanity and um, it sounds really good. This has won all sorts of awards. It's been getting rave reviews. Even people that don't typically read middle grade books seem to love this one. I am here for it. I love that this is, you know, got some Spanish incorporated into it. I love the artwork on it. It's just everything about this says that I'm gonna probably love this book. The second book that I have is A Mall Unbound by Aisha Saeed. I also really love this cover. It's so pretty and colorful and bright. It makes me really, really happy looking at it. So this is about a young girl named Amal who is really dedicated to her education. And then one day she makes a misstep and she accidentally insults the most prominent, powerful family in her village. They decide that they're gonna punish her and basically make her a servant in their home. And it is about her life, you know, becoming a servant, realizing how powerful this family is and what they'll do to keep power. And um, it sounds really amazing. And my third book for middle grade March is When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. This is a Korean folkloric tale and it's about a young girl who is attempting to harness the power of stories and save her grandmother. I don't know a whole ton about this. The cover calls to me. I think that the description sounds amazing. I love anything that is kind of immersed in folklore. So I'm very happy with those three picks for middle grade March. Readathon number two is the Irish readathon for 2023. I wasn't initially planning on participating in this readathon, but I heard about this kind of close to the beginning of the month and decided, you know, I should probably expand my reading a bit. And when I started researching Irish authors, realized, wow, I really haven't read very many Irish authors at all. I've read one book by Sally Rooney, but otherwise like the list of contemporary Irish writing that I looked at was like, a bunch of people I didn't know and so I thought this was a great place to expand my horizons a little bit. I picked out three new to me authors, well I guess two new to me in that I hadn't heard of them before and one new to me in that I haven't ever read anything although I am familiar with the book that I picked up. So the first book that I picked was Room by Emma Donahue. This is about a young boy and his mother who are trapped inside of a room. The young boy sees us as a magical world but the mom is obviously doing a lot to protect him because she's been kept there for seven years by her abductor and is, you know, regularly visited by him and abused. Um, she's going to come up with an escape method or at least attempt an escape method. I have heard a lot about this book. I've heard that it's definitely really difficult, not easy to read. Obviously, it's a very dark subject matter. So I'm going into it, you know, planning for it to be a heavy read, but also I, I expect it to probably be pretty good. The next book is A Girl is a Half-Formed Thing by Amar McBride. This is a book about a young woman and her relationship with her brother and kind of the shadow that his brain tumor has cast over their childhood. I have seen a lot of mixed reviews about this, like in my research, it seems like people either love it or hate it, but I think it goes into a lot of like really difficult topics. It looks like it talks about vulnerability, sexuality, kind of a late coming of age, all that sort of stuff. 
Um, I am looking forward to getting into this. I think this is going to be a bit different than anything I've read before. And my third pick for the Irish Readathon is Milkman by Anna Burns. This book um, also has very mixed reviews. It looks like this won a Booker Prize, or at least was on the shortlist. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it was nominated for Booker Prize somewhere. And it is about a person identified as middle sister, and she is hiding her maybe boyfriend from her in-laws, it seems. But one of her brother-in-laws sniffs out this maybe boyfriend, and all of a sudden, middle sister becomes interesting. And that's the problem because being interesting is dangerous in this world. This is very vague. I'm not sure what to expect going into this. I think this is kind of an experimental piece. Um, I will see. I, I have kind of hit and miss with experimental fiction, but I am trying to broaden my horizons, read different types of books, things that I might not normally pick up. So this might be one of those things and we'll see how it works out. The third readathon that I am participating in for the month of March is March of the Mammoths. And I have a couple mammoths that I've been meaning to get to. So this is the perfect motivation to finally knock a couple of them off. The first book that I am going to read for March of the Mammoths probably needs no introduction, and that is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This is a book that I feel like you just have to type into YouTube and a million videos will come up. People do reading vlogs of themselves sobbing, snot dripping out of their nose, bawling their eyes out, talking about this is the saddest, most difficult book that they've ever read. I have also seen like heavy debates on whether this is trauma porn or it's like an actual real life, realistic sort of an experience. It is a very polarizing book. It is a very emotional book and I know very little about it. I know that there's four friends involved. I know that one of the friends has suffered some pretty extreme abuse. I know that there's also been some concerns raised about its portrayal of people that have disabilities or handicaps. Uh, I'm going to read it for myself. I definitely I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it. I know I've read some books where like people rave about them and then they're like one bad thing after another after another and I feel like it does start to verge into trauma porn but I do think that like a pretty traumatic story obviously can be realistic and I think it depends on the rest of the plot and like what happens how that trauma is relevant I guess so we shall see how this works out for me. The second book that I'm going to be reading is actually on its way to me in the mail right now and that is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell by Susanna Clark. It's probably no secret if you've been following my channel for a while now that Piranesi was one of my favorite books last year. I should say my favorite book last year. I loved Susanna Clark's writing. It was my first time reading her and I just was so happy with it. So I figured that I would start working my way through her other books. And so we have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. Basically, this is set in the 1800s in Britain and the war with Napoleon is still going on. And Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell are both magicians, as I understand it, both very powerful magicians, and they kind of enter into a battle or duel of sorts, and it's a very dangerous thing. So I've heard really good reviews of this book. It's a hefty, hefty book. Um, so I think this is a good time to, to bust it out. So now we're going to get to the part of my TBR that just focuses on Women's History Month. These are just books that I had kind of already picked out before I started considering all the readathons that I thought I would participate in. So I'm going to start with my ARCs and one audiobook that I picked out and then I will jump into my physical TBR. So the first book that I have an arc of is After Sappho by Selby Wynn Schwartz. This I know is an already published book but I actually got an ARC of the audiobook on NetGalley and so I'm going to be listening to this one. It is about, from what I understand, feminists, sapphists, writers, and artists, and it's like a series of vignettes about these women as they fight for justice and control of their own lives. This was, I believe, kind of, I heard murmurs about it with the Booker Prize. I don't remember if it made it to the long list, the short list, like where it fell in the spectrum, but I know I remember first hearing about this book around Booker Prize last year. So we'll see how this goes. This maybe isn't always my usual type of book, but again, that expansion of horizons. So we'll see how it goes. The second ARC that I have is The Girls Who Disappeared by Claire Douglas. This is one that I'm a little bit late to. I know it just published, but this is about a journalist who is receiving death threats as she investigates a car crash that had happened 20 years earlier. I love a good thriller. My third ARC is Dancing for Stalin by Christina Ezrahi. This is set in 1938 or 1939 when a very famous Russian ballerina named Nina 
is captured, accused of being a Nazi sympathizer, and sent to a gulag. So I'm really excited to dig into this book. Historical fiction is like one of my bread and butter genres, and this is a bit of historical fiction that I probably should know more about than I do. I think that the Russian gulags and the internment of people in them is something I've read some about, and I do know a little bit about, but definitely I think there's room obviously to always read more stories and learn more about it. My fourth ARC for the month is one that I'm very excited about and that's Stone Blind by Natalie Hayes. This is a book about Medusa. She is the only non-god in a family of gods and I think this is like a feminist retelling of her story. I love Greek mythology retells. Good to revisit the Greek mythology once in a while. I also have an arc of The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell that's coming out this month as well. And this is about six contestants in a baking competition. They go to like this mansion and things start getting weird. Weird stuff starts happening and eventually someone is uh, killed. And it just explores what happened and it's a, I think a whodunit. I am really looking forward to this. It's a baking competition, it means there's gonna be food, it means it's gonna be about cooking and things like that. I'm here for it. Again, it's a thriller, which I enjoy. And I feel like, again, this will be, you know, a good, not that it's necessarily lighter, but it's just a break from like the real life, you know, more difficult traumatic books. And my final arc that I have this month is The Adventures of Amina Al-Sirafi by Shannon Chakraborty. This is about the infamous pirate Amina Al-Sirafi, and she's offered a job that no pirate can refuse. She is going to go rescue her comrade's kidnapped daughter for a sum that no pirate would ever give up. I know that this just dropped with Book of the Month. I imagine a lot of people will be reading it very soon. And I'm really looking forward to this. This sounds pretty good. And I love kind of a pirate fantasy, you know, on the seas, adventure sort of a story. Again, a good counterbalance to a lot of the heavy reading I'll be doing this month. And the book that I'll be listening to on audiobook which is not an ARC, just one that I happen to pick up on audiobook, is After the Hurricane by Leah Franke. This is a book about a woman trying to find her father in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. So for my physical TBR, I have a pretty decent stack of books, all of them from my actual bookshelves. So I'm gonna be working on clearing off some of these books this month. And I am very excited. I feel like I have a lot of strong reads on here. So the first one that I have is The Book of Goose by Yi Yun Li. This is a book that I picked up in a video probably about three or four weeks ago. It was my book shopping video, which you can see up here if you're interested. And this is a book about a girl named Agnes. She is living in the United States when she finds out that her best friend Fabian is dead back in France. As children, the two of them grow up in a war-torn France. They create like a whole game that they sort of play and that eventually launches Agnes into fame and fortune. I've heard that this is a really pretty dark book and I've heard a lot of rave reviews about it. I am very much looking forward to getting into it. I think that this kind of has an experimental thing to it and it's a bit different, I think, than what I typically read as well. And then I have Electra by Jennifer Saint. This is another Greek mythology retell. This one is about Clytemnestra, Princess Cassandra, and Agamemnon's youngest daughter. I believe in terms of Clytemnestra, it's about Agamemnon's betrayal of her with Princess Cassandra. It's about the gift of prophecy that she has. And for Agamemnon's daughter, it's about her waiting for his return from war. After that, I have as Long As the Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katua. This is such a stunning book cover. I really love the design of this whole thing. This is about Syria and our main character is named Salama. Salama is living in Syria. Her life is good. Her family's alive. She's a student. And then the war hits and things change. She begins volunteering in a hospital. She's taking care of injured people and she starts to develop post-traumatic stress disorder. In order to cope, she creates a character named Koff, and Koff is there to protect her and help her, and he is encouraging her to flee the country. She feels torn, her loyalty is with her country, but her loyalty is also to herself and her best friend, who is very, very close to giving birth. So this is gonna be about that, you know, coming to terms with what's going on in her country, her post-traumatic stress, her friend, her loyalties. I think this is gonna be a heartbreaker of a book. After that, I have The Circus Train by Amita Parika. And I picked this up on my book of the month, like probably three or four months ago. This is a book about Lena in set in 1938. Lena has survived polio. She's in a wheelchair and 
her mind is really, instead of being focused on magic and circus and all that, she's more focused on science and medicine and, and things that humanity is accomplishing. She then meets a orphan boy named Alexander with his own secrets and mystery, and they become fast friends. Fast forward a little bit and World War II starts. Both kids are captured and forced to perform in an all Jewish city by Nazi guards. And Lena is eventually separated from Alexander and forced to make her own way. Then I have The Vegetarian by Han Kang. So this is a book that receives really polarizing reviews. It, some people really, really love it and some people don't get it. And I'm kind of curious to see where I fall on the spectrum. This is a very short read. I think it's only like 170 or so pages. And it is about a woman, I believe in South Korea, who decides to become a vegetarian. And her family really flips out. Like they lose their mind culturally, think they don't understand vegetarianism. And they are concerned that, that she is like mentally ill. So they're forced, trying to force her to eat meat. And this becomes an act of resistance. And I think that this kind of parallels what women are forced to do on a daily basis. And I think it's told in multiple parts, if I remember correctly. Again, some people that I really respect have reviewed it and said it's a really good book, um, but I don't always get books like this. So we'll see how it goes. And then I have Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is a memoir and Chanel Miller was victim Jane Doe in a really famous rape case here in the States. She was basically raped by someone who was caught in the act of raping her, was held down until the police got there. There was copious amounts of evidence, witnesses, everything that exists that should have made this a cut and dry case. And somehow the asshole that violated her still managed to basically escape with nothing but a slap on the wrist. And so she wrote a just scorching witness statement. And at the time she was unidentified. Um, and it made her, its way around, you know, the media and everything. And she decided eventually to write this book about this experience and justice and, and everything that happened to her. I know this is going to be a maddening, heartbreaking, infuriating memoir, but I've also heard it's one of the best. I know that it won a lot of praise when it came out. And I most recently saw a review of it on Books and Cooks video where she talked about like five, I want to say five memoirs that everybody should read. I've got to find the video and I'll link it in my description box, but that was a great video and it had a lot of really good memoir descriptions and it made me decide that it's probably time for me to pick this up. I've had this on my shelf for a bit and I've been kind of just waiting for the right time, but I think as a very important women's issue, this is something it's probably appropriate to read this month. Next up, we have The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. This is another book that has been receiving rave reviews. I read Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, I want to say last year. I enjoyed it. I wasn't sure that I would because like Shakespearean stuff is not necessarily my favorite read, but I found it really compelling and engaging and enough so that it made me want to read this book as well. I don't know a whole ton about it. I actually picked this up on a used book rack at my local library maybe two weeks back. And um, it's about a girl named Lucretia in Florence in the 1550s. Her sister is supposed to marry this man and dies on the eve of her wedding. And basically this guy just says, well, let me marry Lucretia instead. And Lucretia's father says, okay. And so she's forced into this marriage. She's barely out of girlhood, has no time to prepare for the idea of getting married. And then she marries him. She doesn't really understand a lot of like what's going on. She doesn't know much about him. She's thrust into the limelight. She's you know forced into court, a whole bunch of different stuff. And this is about the experience. I have heard a lot of good things about this, so I'm sure that I will probably enjoy this. And then I have All's Well by Mona Awad. This is about a woman who gets into a crippling car accident and is left with extreme pain and painkiller addiction. Her addiction threatens her job. She becomes determined to put on Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well, which is the play that ended her career essentially. I think she's looking for some sort of redemption. I haven't read anything by Mona Awad, although I do have two of her books on my shelf, this one and Bunny. I've heard that her writing is dark, quirky, kind of humorous, but it's a very specific type of humor. So I'm not sure how I'll feel about this, honestly. I'm trying to go in with an open mind and not really learn too much about the book. I haven't read any reviews or anything. I just want to kind of be blind about it. So I'm looking forward to it. I actually really love this cover, honestly. I think it's so cool. So we'll see how it goes. The next book that I have is A Woman Is No Man by Itaf Rum. This is a book that's been on my shelf for a bit and I keep eyeballing and meaning to get to. I'm 
here we are. So this book is told in two different timelines. We have one timeline set in 1990 Palestine and a second timeline set in Brooklyn in 2008. In the Palestine timeline, we have 17 year old Isra who she prefers reading the books and education. She's not super interested in marriage. And unfortunately over the course of a week is basically forced to get married and move to Brooklyn. She's given no choice about it. Her father demands it. And then in 2008 in Brooklyn, we have a granddaughter who doesn't want to get married and yet her grandmother is adamant that the only way to secure her future is through marriage. So I am really curious to see how these two timelines play out, how the different characters, you know, react to this forced marriage situation. Um, I've heard good things about this. And my next book is Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. I don't know a whole lot about this book, just that it's about a couple and their marriage. And the only reason I don't know a lot about it is because I went into the last book that I read by Lauren Groff, Matrix, without really any idea of what it was about. And it was something that gobsmacked me. I loved it, it was such a good book. It, um, it really took me by surprise. And so I'm trying to go into this book the same way. I know that this is about a married couple. I know that it's about their relationship. It kind of goes from when they're struggling to when they're more successful, but I don't know anything about it. Aside from that, I haven't read any reviews, anything like that, but I, I like Lauren Groff as a writer. So I expect I'll probably like this. Then we have With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is the author of The Poet X and Clap When You Land. I have not read either book yet, but I've heard amazing things about both. My mom actually just read this book and reviewed it on her bookstagram. And it sounds like something that I would really love. We have Imani, who is a young woman. I believe she's still a teenager. She gets pregnant and it's kind of about her survival and, and making her way in life through, you know, being a young mother. One of her coping mechanisms is that she loves to cook. And my mom said that there's a lot of food description in this book, which means I'm automatically sold on it. And this cover is stunning. I just, everything about this seems like something I'm going to love. So I'm looking forward to getting into it. After that, we have Dear Edward by Anne Napolitano. This is a book about a young boy named Edward who boards a plane with his family and then the plane crashes and all 183 other passengers on it die. When he survives, the media is like hounding him. You know, obviously he becomes a big sensational story. And this is about him struggling to find his place in life after this horrific accident. And um, I imagine it's gonna delve into trauma, PTSD, things like that. I've heard really good things about it. I know it's gonna be a pretty tragic book, but I am thinking it's also gonna be very good. Then by Ruth Emmy Lang. I received an advanced reader copy of this last year. Then unfortunately I had a rough bout with COVID and just didn't really get around to this. But this was a book of the month pick. I've heard really good things about this book. So this is a book about a woman named Nora who disappears and then her two daughters. Zadie is her older daughter and Zadie can literally see things coming except she didn't see her mother's disappearance coming. And then the younger daughter Finn has a really good memory. One day Finn wakes up, she's having some memories of things that didn't happen to her and she realizes she's literally seeing her mother's memories. This convinces her her mother is still alive and now all she has to do is convince her sister Zadie that mom's still out there and that she wants to be found. And so I believe the two of them are gonna set off on an adventure to try and find out what happened to their mother heard good things about it. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I have an inkling this might be one of my favorites this month. After that, I have Beyond That the Sea by Laura Spence Ash. This is an ARC copy. This should be publishing any day now. I forget specifically when, but sometime this month. And this is about a girl who in World War II, it's like 1940s in London and her parents, you know, are, are wanting to protect her. So they send her to the United States where she meets the Gregory family. She initially isn't very happy to be there, doesn't love the Gregories and wants to return home to London to her parents, but eventually she becomes a part of the Gregory family. And then once the war ends and things are settled down, her parents recall her to London and it's kind of about that conflict and feeling torn between her two homes. After that, I have Darling by Kay Ankrum. This is a Peter Pan retelling. I read Darling Girl last year. It was a Peter Pan retelling. I loved it. It was kind of a dark and gritty version of that. And this sounds like it's kind of in a similar vein. This is about a young girl named Wendy. She meets a boy named Peter on her first night in town and she thinks that they're gonna go out to party, but they actually end up running in the city's gritty underground. She meets a punk girl named Tinkerbell, a bunch of lost boys. And this is kind of, you know, like I said, a gritty version of Peter Pan. I look forward to this. This is young adult, so it's a shorter read. I think it'll be an easier read. Definitely might be a little dark, but I think it'll be a nice balance again with some of these heavier books on my TBR. Next up is Unbound by Tarana Burke. This is a book that was on my TBR for February for Black History Month. 
Unfortunately, I ran out of time and did not get to it during that month. So I thought that it would be good for Women's History Month because this is about the Me Too movement. Toronto Burke was the founder of the Me Too hashtag and that whole thing. And it was essentially stolen from her, um, hijacked by a bunch of white feminists. And this is her story and her experience. Um, I think that this is, again, something that's very relevant to women's history because this was one of the largest women's movements in, in recent history. So I'm looking forward to getting into this. Again, a difficult topic, but I think it's going to be really good. After that, I have The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This is a novella and a handful of short stories, and I think each one kind of features a character that is trying to rewrite history or change history for various reasons. I have heard that this is amazing um, and I am looking forward to getting into it. And then I have one of my books that was like one of my most anticipated releases at the end of 2022. That was Babel by RF Quang. I read the Poppy War trilogy by RF Quang and absolutely loved it. So when I saw that this was coming out, I was like, bump this up on the list. This is a book that's kind of dark academia vibes. It's about some students and a murder mystery. I think this also deals with themes of racism, colonialism, and I've heard that it's a very relevant and a really, really well-written book. I have no doubt that it's well-written because I love Quang's writing and I'm really looking forward to getting into it. And then I have Notes on an Execution by Danya Kukafka. I've been hearing a lot about this book as well. I hear that it is amazingly written. So this is about a man on death row, I believe, and I guess he's a, a murderer or a serial killer, I'm not quite sure. But from what I understand, this book is told from the perspective of the women in his life, the victims, his mother, people that are, you know, surrounding him. I don't know much more than that. I've intentionally kind of tried to avoid really learning much more than that because I like to go in blind and kind of just be surprised by it, let it unfold around me. But I have high expectations for it. And the final book on my list was a recommendation that I saw from Gunpowder Fiction Plot. The book that I decided to pick up upon his recommendation is Glory by No Violet Bulawayo. This is a satire. So this is a book that is set in Zimbabwe and is a satire of the 2017 coup that ousted the president, Robert Mugabe. I believe that this is told via animals, similar to like an animal farm type satire. I, again, haven't really looked into this too much. I know just the very basics about it because I wanna go in with the open and objective mind and like allow this story to just kind of surprise me. I am really looking forward to this. This is probably one of my more anticipated reads on this entire TBR. So fingers crossed this is gonna be one that I really enjoy. So there you have it. You have my TBR for three different readathons, my TBR for Women's History Month, and a few of the ARCs that I'm also trying to knock out. We will see. Obviously, I'm probably not going to be able to read all of these books because I think we're upwards of about 30, but I'm going to sure as hell try to read as many as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, and let me know, are you participating in any readathons in March? If so, which ones? And if you're not participating in any readathons, what are you reading in March? Do you have anything that you're really looking forward to? And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell, so that way you never miss a video, and we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining. Bye.